everybody and welcome back to another video. If you saw my last video I did a bit of a sewing vlog, it was my first ever vlog and I actually really enjoyed it so I thought I would do another one for you this week. This video I haven't actually planned so I don't really know exactly how it's going to pan out so I'm hoping I get enough footage to put together a vlog. So it's going to be similar to my last vlog where I started working on a pair of shorts for myself and then I posted them on Instagram and a lot of you wanted the pattern for them so I'm now going to be developing that into a pattern. I'm also going to make a trouser version. I need to sample that, I need to see how it works but yeah hopefully that works out. Before I do any of that I have something else to show you that I'm going to work on first which is a quick easy So First thing I'll do is show you these shorts. So here are the shorts as they have been made up. So we've got a fly front. I obviously haven't added my hook and eyes here yet. Also, this is one centimeter too big because I'll have another waistband attached and I haven't added the belt loops yet. So yeah, this is how they're looking. We've obviously got the tuck. It's not a pin tuck because it's not small enough. We had this discussion on Instagram. So yeah, it's just a tuck. Um, I've just cut the hem to length. I haven't actually hemmed it. We've got the side seam pockets here which aren't lying flat, but on closer inspection, I try to press them. And if you look here, I've tried to press them too far back. This is the press line. So I think I need to repress them on the mannequin to help them lie a bit flatter. I also think calico is extremely unforgiving, so it could be that. And then let's spin around. Here is the back view. And I'm quite happy with the fit there as well. If you saw my last vlog, you'll also know that I had a fridge here. Well, that is now gone, but I still haven't wallpapered this wall. So we're just gonna have to deal with it for now. Anyway, as I said, I have something different I'm working on first. So I found a sweatshirt pattern draft that I drafted a long time ago. Completely forgot about it, found it in one of my books. So I'm actually gonna work on that. Okay, so here we have the sweatshirt pattern. I have this lovely like top kind of grey um, sweatshirt and fabric. It's got like a brush back to it. It's really soft. I got this from My Fabrics. So yeah, I went straight ahead and cut into my main fabric because I figured how much can you actually go wrong with a sweatshirt? Yeah, I don't have any ribbing, which is a shame for the neckline. So I'm gonna be, and like the cuffs and things. So I'm gonna be using this fabric itself. I hope it looks all right. I mean, I don't, I prefer ribbing, but trying to get a color match to this, would just be ridiculous. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. So I've got a back and I've got a front and they will literally just sew together at the shoulder seams. And then I will attach the sleeves and then do the side seams. So I think this is a relatively good view so you can see what I'm doing. So here is the back. I love this color. I hope that this comes out well. This is my front. But basically all I'm going to do is put them together and pin them at the shoulder seam. So there's my shoulder seams pinned together. I don't have that many thread options to be honest for this colour. Let me have a look. Lots of threads, probably not the right options. It doesn't really go but that is quite nice. So I think I'm just going to go white, what I'm already threaded up in, and then we'll just go from there. And I'll keep this one out as like a potential top stitch thread. So I've done my shoulder seams. So I have this handy little table iron that you just unhook these edges and then that's it. I've just covered it in calico to keep it from burning like this. So now what I'm gonna do is press these seams towards the back here. So now I need to do my neckline binding. So now what I'm gonna do is then just press these seams down. I don't know how well you can see on camera, but I did get I did get a bit of a tuck in the neckline, which is a bit annoying, but I've just top stitched all the way around the edge. I probably could adjust that, but it doesn't bother me enough to take it out and redo it. Um, so I'm gonna leave it for now. But just be careful on my next one. Anyway, next step is to attach the sleeves. So we'll move that out of the way for now. Yeah, so now like I was saying, because this is a drop shoulder, the sleeves are quite straightened off here and they're exactly the same front and back. So it doesn't really matter which way they go in. I'm just gonna mark the halfway points. So lay my top out and then I'm going to place my sleeve on here. Right, and I'm gonna sew that seam. Okay, so quick check-in. This is what we're currently working with. Excuse 
this mess at the back. It probably wouldn't look so bad if it was the right colour. But we are currently here and so far it's looking good. All I need to do now is add the cuffs and the, like a hem or like a waistband band, like the band at the bottom. And then my sweatshirt will be done. I actually really want to do some sort of like embroidery on here because I've got an embroidery machine that I never really use. So I'm either going to do something right in the middle or maybe like up here. I could do it on the cuffs. That might be quite, quite cute along here. If you have any ideas of what I could embroider, please do let me know in the comments um, because I'm not sure. And to be honest, I'll probably end up going for flowers if I don't think of anything. So the next update is I have attached the cuff. I have top stitched around the edge because my overlocking wasn't pressing up very well. I do regret it though. So I didn't want to make it too tight because it's quite hard to, unless it's ribbing, it's quite hard to stretch and fit to this. So I've made it quite loose, but it is an oversized sweatshirt anyway. So this is what we're looking like so far. I need to do this cuff. So this is without the top stitching and i think it just looks so much neater and nicer if i got a little tuck there yeah so this is the neckline i'm actually quite happy with how it sits i didn't want it to be really high up and i didn't want it to be really low and i'm actually quite happy there because if you're wearing a necklace or something you can just see it so here we go we've got big wide armholes you can see it's a drop shoulder so the seam comes down here which makes a nice slouchy look it's very simple it's very loose so yeah, I'm happy with that. If they've got some left actually, I don't know if they'll have this color, but if they do, I might order some more and make some joggers out of it. We'll see, but yeah, overall, I really like this. But yeah, I like this oversized arms. Yeah. Hello everybody. So I have now finished the sweatshirt and I'm gonna move back onto those shorts that I showed you at the beginning. The first thing I'm gonna do is scan in the pattern but it's a bit of a mess at the minute because of all the alterations that I've made. So I'm gonna just trace it off, make it all neat and tidy, and then get it digitized in. I'll show you how I digitize it just because a few people have asked me that before. Um, some people take photos. I don't find that that works. The scale's always off, so I scan it. I am literally just, my pattern is under here. So this is with all the adjustments. And then I'm just gonna trace it off onto here. And then I will show you what I do next. Here is one of my pattern pieces and I've just, I did it in pencil and then I've just traced over it in pen to make it more clear. And then what I do to digitize it in is I split the pattern, so I use a different color pen this time, into pieces that will fit onto an A4 page. I actually think all of those will fit, so I'll draw my second line. So the right way up, it's gonna be a little bit hard on camera, but I'll put like, because my camera's in the way, F. One, and then this one will be F. I don't normally write like this, but because I don't wanna be in the way of the camera, F2, F, three, and F. Four. So now this block is F4, this block is F3, and then what I do is I just scan each section into the computer, and when they scan, they scan at perfect size. I can measure these to make sure that it's to scale. But yeah, that is how I scan my pieces in, and then what I do is once this is scanned in, I open all these files in Illustrator, and then I join them together matching these lines. I'll screen record when I do it with this piece, and then it'll all make sense. So here you can see I've scanned each section into the computer. Now I'll drag the first one into Illustrator and place it where I want it. Then I'll drag the second one in and reduce the opacity a bit. Then I line the pieces up at a point. I click the rotate tool onto this point and then line them up as neat as possible, zooming in to increase accuracy. I'll repeat this until all the pieces are in, then I'll measure for scale if needed. Once they're all ready, I create a new layer and trace around with the pen tool, delete the old layer, and there I have my pattern piece. Good 
morning everybody so it is tuesday morning last night i finished the day by scanning the pattern into the computer and um, so i scanned the shorts in and i scanned the sweatshirt in i need to pre-wash some fabrics because some beautiful fabrics arrived from good fabric they gifted the fabrics to me to make the shorts that i want to make i went with this a beautiful how stunning is this i don't know how well it will show up on camera colors better back here it's like a forest green linen now this is Serona linen. It's really soft and perfect for clothing. It's quite drapey. This has got, it's like really fluid. Like, can you see? Oh, it's also got a little bit of stretch to it. So just a slight bit. I think that's that, not that way. I think that's the Serona in it. So that's gonna be perfect for the shorts. Oh my God, there's loads of bits in here. Another fabric I got is this beautiful double gauze fabric with this lovely embroidered detail over it. It's really nice and fluid again. I want to make a long sleeve tie front top. Now I do a pattern for a top like that. I haven't used it in a long time. I wasn't expecting this, but these are so, so cute. So good fabric do accessories as well. These are just so cute. Right, this but is a magnetic bracelet pin holder. I've been needing something like this for such a long time because my pins just end up everywhere. So, it looks like this. You just snap it, you snap it on there. It's got a film on it, so once I take that off, it won't look all scratched. And then, this is metal, this is my little bodkin. It just attaches like this. So yeah, that's really, really cool. I like that. A self-measuring tape. This is cool too, actually. Sometimes it can be really hard to measure stuff, so this is cool, so we'll do my bust because you can see that. Pull it out, comes in inches and centimetres. And then you can just slot it in here. 34. That's it. Cool. Look, it holds in place. A lighted seam ripper. Now, I've never seen one of these before. So your seam, this is a funny little contraption. Your seam ripper is here, look, and it moves. And then there's a little thing here that you turn on. And then look, you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think, but we're going to give it a go. There we go. That's really cool. Thank you so much if you're watching this, Polina, because I wasn't expecting those at all and they're really, really handy tools. Now that I've shown you all that, so obviously I will link all of these in the description as well. I'll link the fabrics, I will link all of these little bits that have been sent to me as well. I'm gonna pre-wash these fabrics now. It's terrible. Oh, the weather this week is awful. We've had beautiful weather in the UK, but it's just been raining constantly. But it's dry until three o'clock, potentially. So I'm thinking if I can wash it now, at least one of them, then I can put it on the line and then I can always dry the rest in the house. Good morning, everybody. Excuse the state in here. I've said this before, but I have fabric hanging on the door now, drying. All my fabric dried yesterday, apart from that one piece. So my fabric has dried. We have the green and we have the beautiful off-white double gauze. So I'm gonna start working on the shorts today in the green. I didn't have much to show you yesterday because um, I basically just sat at the computer grading. So that was all I did, but I did manage to grade the entire size four to 18 shorts. Oh, by the way, this uh, top was one I made. I actually made it out of active wear fabric. So I could wear it for the gym as well, but that wasn't the intention. This is actually a pattern from Pattern Scout. I will tag it in the description. I was looking for zips today for my green shorts and I actually don't have any so I'm gonna have to go into town and get some zips probably gonna also need to get some thread because I think I've got a bottle green but I think it's gonna be too dark anyway as I was going the only zip that I actually do have that would be suitable is this one which is a brown I don't know if it's gonna show very well but it's a brown zip with like this bronzy colored teeth on it it's a little bit too long but that's okay because long's better than shorter and I was thinking I have got some brown fabric if I've got enough that's another question but I have this beautiful I don't know if it's gonna show up I got it from rainbow fabrics ages ago this beautiful, oh, if I put it to the light, you might be able to see. Can you see the little chevrons on it? I think it's a tent, tensile, right? But it's got this lovely little chevron. There we go. You can see it there, this chevron print all the way through in this beautiful chocolate brown and the zip will work for that. But I haven't sampled the trousers yet. So I thought if I get the fit right on the shorts first, then I just extend the legs to make the trousers. And I might make the trousers out of this chocolate brown. But I think then I could make them work in the autumn, winter as well. Today's plan is the green. Tomorrow's plan is the cream. But yeah, let's get cutting. So 
I'm back from town, I needed to get thread and a zip. I really, really struggled to get a zip. The type of zip I wanted was a six inch and I like the ones that have got the metal tee that you would normally use in jeans and things like that, but they didn't have any of them. So I got a standard dress zipper, which I think will work. It's not gonna be as sturdy as a normal, as a metal one. Anyway, I also picked up some fabric while I was there. I am based in Manchester and we have a shop called Abacan here. Pretty much the only fabric shop as far as I'm aware in town. So I got this green and there's the fabric. Like it's not a, a match at all, but it was really the only color that would go. So um, yeah, I did pick up a zip. I need to shorten it as well. It's nine inches and I needed six. I got threads, so for the top and the shorts. Now, in Abacan, if you haven't been there before, they do sort of remnants that are cut to random sizes. I think these are approximately three meters what I've got here each. You can get them cut down if it's too much for you, but you need to leave them with a meter. So I just take what's there normally. It's really quite cheap. So first thing I got was this rib, uh, this like jersey rib. It's really soft. They didn't have loads of this soft one. They had loads of colors. They were all quite like stiff. So anyway, I got some of that and I got quite a bit. I think it's about three meters, but I wanted to make some like loungewear trousers, uh, like wide leg loungewear trousers that I can wear around the house. I got that, I'm hoping it's enough. I think it should be. So I got that and then I also got this, which is like a check, it's like a check suiting fabric. I got quite a bit of this and I actually thought the shorts that I'm working on are gonna be trousers as well. And I thought this, would make some really nice trousers because they're gonna be like what, quite wide leg and they're gonna have that uh, tuck detail all the way down the front. Wide waistband, belt, I think they'd look really smart. So I, if you saw my last video, I made a belt, like I made a proper belt to go with the shorts. This time I thought what would be really nice is a tortoise shell belt buckle. And I found a couple on Etsy, so I'll pop a little picture here probably of what I found on Etsy so I've ordered them I've ordered two I've ordered a circle because I thought that might be really nice as well and give it almost like a vintage feel and I've ordered a rectangle now these don't have the belt buckle prongs on them I have got some so I could add them if I wanted to but I thought what might be nice is to keep it quite simple and just have like a standard you know like when you like a fabric belt where you just weave it through I thought that might look really nice so I think I'm gonna do that it's gonna save me a bit of effort and I think it might look cleaner, more vintage vibes. Yeah, so now I've got all my bits and bobs, I'm gonna interface my pieces and then I'm gonna start sewing the shorts. I'm not gonna show you everything because obviously when I release the pattern, I'll do a full tutorial. I'm gonna get cracking with making the short and then I will show you at intervals where we're at. So let's get to it. So this is what we are currently looking like. All I've actually done is put the fly in um, and the zip's okay actually it works quite well because you can't see much of it and i've done the tucks anyway right i'm gonna crack on and get on with the pockets the back's relatively easy hopefully it's not too far from here okay here is an update we've got the waistband on and the belt loops in the fly is in everything is going to plan now i've done the hems as well they're all done. My belt buckles have been dispatched, so I'm really excited for them. Uh, now that we just need to hope they fit, so I'm gonna put the waistband on, uh, well, the last piece of the waistband on, and then try them on, so, fingers crossed. So, they fit, obviously I need to do the little waist things. Anyway, yes, really happy with them. So here we go, and then there is the back view. Morning everybody and welcome back to another day. Today is Thursday. I still need to add the hook and eyes to the waistband of the shorts, so I'll do that later. And I'm just waiting for the belt uh, buckle to arrive now, so then they will be finished and I'm really excited for that. Anyway, today I am cracking on and I'm going to make the tie front top out of this beautiful fabric. So that is on today's agenda. I'm not gonna film loads of it because I am gonna actually try and use my camera to film in like vertical videos that I could potentially use for reels on Instagram. I started using my camera and it worked really well. So hopefully I'm gonna do that today. I'll film a little bit maybe. If not, I will show you the final result when it's done. And yeah, once I've done that, I will update you. All right, let's get cracking. Hello. 
Hello everybody, I thought I would just give you a little update on the top. So far so good, I'm hoping I have enough for the sleeves. Um, but yeah, I decided that actually, because this is so soft, I would French seam everything because I thought it'd be a shame to uh, ruin it with overlocking. So I French seamed all the seams and then I've actually double gauze, used the double gauze for binding. Um, which I didn't think would work initially and it is quite chunky, like wide, but I actually think that's really nice and I think then the stitching on the front being quite wide, this is a bit of a mess here, just ignore that bit, um, looks really lovely and do you know what, it's still really soft, so it's going to be really nice on the skin. Now I'm going to have to try and front seam the armholes and then the hem, I need to work out what to do if I'm just gonna double turn that or also bind that. I've got more binding. I actually made quite a bit, so I'm thinking that I might bind it. But yeah, so far, this is how it's looking. And I am really happy with it as it currently is. Yeah, right, back to it. These just arrived. Now that, if I do say so myself, is perfect timing. These are actually so nice. They're kind of like a resin, I think. I think I'm gonna go with this one because I think that green is gonna look lovely against this. Yeah, really, really nice. So these arrived within like a couple of days from Etsy. I like this tone a bit more. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make up the belt. It's gonna be, it's gonna be quite quick and easy to be honest, cause I'm, I'm just doing like a thread through belt and then I will try them on and I will show you in a minute. I'm just editing this video and realized I never actually did any sort of outro and it was a bit abrupt so I just wanted to pop on here and say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and please don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Mm -hmm.